Hi. How are you? Good. That's good. So, you wanted to learn about linear equations, right? Okay, cool. So, let's do a problem like this. Two Oh yeah, you're tired. That's okay. If you fall asleep, I'll just come back tomorrow. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm just here to hang out anyway, so... Yeah, feel free to just fall asleep. But, um, yeah, so... I kind of asked you this question before. And so this means 2 times 1 number equals 6, right? The 2 and the x here, x is a variable, right? So it has some kind of value. And I'm trying to figure out that value. So if you have a problem that says solve, solve for x, or something like this, solve x, and then this, what it means is we want to say x equals something. That's how we would answer the question. So this is a question. It's 2 times 1 number is 6. And then you would answer that. That number is whatever, right? And so, you know, you might try and guess. Let's try 5. 2 times 5 is... 10, so that's not 6. Then you might try, well, 2 times 4 is 8, good, but that's not 6. Then you might finally get around to 2 times 3 is 6, so I would answer x is 3. But if we had to sit here and guess randomly, that might take us forever. And sometimes you just would never really guess it because sometimes solutions are really crazy with square roots and stuff and negative numbers and fractions and, you know, <laughs> it would take a while. So, of course, it would be convenient if we had a method or some rules that we can use. Oh, that's cool, you say? Yeah, I think so, too. So it's cool about math. <laughs> so let's learn a rule. So remember that 1 is the multiplicative identity. Multiplicative. Multiplicative identity, right? And then, so that means that 1 times anything is itself, or anything times 1, rather, is also itself, right? 1 times any number is that number, and any number times 1 is that number. So that means that if somehow I can rearrange this so that instead of 2 times x, I have 1 times x. That'd be very convenient, because if I have 1 times x, 1 times x is going to be x, because of the multiplicative identity, right? So right now, it's almost like saying 2 times something. 2 times my age is 6. I know I act 3 sometimes, so. 2 times something is 6. My goal is to say, well, I want 1 times that something. So what we're going to do is really use this convenient equal sign 
I love this thing. It's so underrated, in my opinion. Because this is so, so, so powerful. It looks so simple as a symbol, but it's so great because it's literally saying whatever is on this side equals or is this side. It doesn't look like it. This doesn't look like 6 equals 6, but it is. My 2x is 6. I can have all kinds of stuff over here. I can have 2xy plus q plus pi plus whatever, all squared equals 6. And the minute I have this equal sign, it means that the two sides are balanced. And a common, um, a common analogy is literally having a scale, like a balance, and you want to make sure it stays balanced on either side of the equal sign. So, it doesn't look like it, but this is this. Okay, it might sound like a broken record by the end of this. However, that means that whatever I do on this side, as long as I do on this side, we have an equivalent equation because it stays balanced. This is basically saying like 6 equals 6. So if I add 3 for instance onto this side, I get 9. But then if I also add 3 onto this side, of course then 9 still equals 9. So whatever I do to this side, as long as I do to this side, we're good. Okay? But let's be clever in what I choose to do, and that's the goal here. So I notice I have a 2 times x, a 2x. So what I'm going to do is multiplication. I'm going to do the opposite of 2 times x, the opposite, which is division. We can think of division as the opposite of multiplication, because if I multiply something by 2, or 2 times something. If I divide by 2, what is 2 over 2, or 2 divided by 2? That's 1. If I double something, and then I have it, I get my original thing. So that's convenient, because, now that I really scribbled all over my problem, that means if I choose to divide by 2 here, okay, I'm going to conveniently do that because I have a 2 times x. So I'm going to divide by 2. But if I divide by 2 on this side, I must divide by 2 on this side, right? So the 2 divided by 2 becomes 1. And 1 times my x is x. So then I get x equals 6 divided by, or you can write that as 6 over 2. Fractions are basically division, okay? Either way, you get 3. So that's how you got x equals 3, okay? So, and then that was our answer. And if we plug it back in, 2 times 3 is 6, so we got the right answer. That's how we would check. Check. 2 times 3 equals 6. Yes. So, really what we're doing is the opposite. The opposite. And in this particular case, the opposite is divide. So, there's a lot of just subtle things that are happening when we're trying to solve this. The opposite here is the fact that it's multiplication. It tells me I'm going to divide, 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 okay? So multiplication and division are opposites. And division are opposites in that 
they cancel each other out. Multiplying 5 by 5 and then dividing by 5 gives me 1. They cancel out to give me the multiplicative identity. So since it's 2 times x, I'm going to divide by 2. So the 2 comes from this 2, and I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication. Once I get 1, 1 times x is x. But if I divide by 2 on this side, I divide by 2 on this side. Now if you want to just skip a step here, you can actually visualize what's actually going on instead of writing divide by 2 and divide by 2. Knowing that I chose this 2 because of the coefficient, and I'm always going to choose it that way, essentially what you're doing, if you look at this, what's going on, I'm basically moving this 2 over to the other side. It's another way of, just as another way to phrase what we're doing, right? If we move this to the other side, since it was multiplication, it is now division. So you can think of it that way if you like to think of rules. Now it's divide by 2, which is just 3. So if you like to write things out so that you're dividing by 2 and dividing by 2, you can definitely do that. But if you just want to save, your save yourself a step, you can just visualize it as moving the 2. Okay, see, because that's basically what happened. Basically just moving the 2. Okay? And then we get, by when we move the 2 by doing the opposite, so 6 divided Okay, so this is an example of one step, one step, because our one step is to just move it, or just to divide on both sides, right? So this is one step linear equation, and I'll explain why this is linear later on, but it's a one step linear equation with one variable. In this case, x. Okay? So, I hope that that's kind of interesting. If you're, um, if you are interested, I'm actually, there's no reason, there's no particular reason why I started with multiplication and division, but if you are curious, we can also do this for addition and sub traction. So we'll do that soon as well. And um, I should also mention that we can work the other way. So if I said x over 3 equals 5, and we want to solve for x here, okay, I have an x divided by 3 is 5. So what number divided by 3 equals 5? So, of course, if you're guessing, you're basically doing what we're doing here, essentially. Unless you just want to pick a random number, like, um, 10,000. <laughs> but essentially, you're doing it, maybe, without realizing it. So, either you can think of this as, again, we have this equal sign. You can think of this as something divided by 3, so I'm going to do the opposite and multiply by 3, right? The opposite of divide would be multiply, because if I divide by 3 and then multiply by 3, this is essentially a 3 over 1, right? They cancel, and 1 times x is x because of the multiplicative identity. But if I multiply by 3 on this side, I have to multiply by 3 on this side. So I get x equals 15. See that? Isn't that so cool? So again, if you want the shortcut rule, so to speak, you can just do, if I'm trying to solve, um, if I'm trying to solve x over 3 equals 5, the rule is I'm going to move this 3 over here. You can visualize it that way because you can see that I multiplied by 3. 
and I choose to multiply by 3 just to cancel that 3 out. So you don't have to keep writing it over and over. Instead, you can think of it as I'm moving the 3 to the other side of the equal sign. And so I have my 3 on the other side, but since it was division, it's now multiplication. Pretty slick, right? So x equals 15. And that's true because, and you can check that, right? You can check because you plug your 15 back into our original problem. Does 15 divided by 3 equal 5? Yes, it does. It's a question mark. <laughs> so yes, it does. So that's why this works. Multiplication and division are opposites because they balance each other out to get one. And if you want to write that out as fractions, you can. Like I said, if you have something divided by three and then you multiply by three, the reason is just essentially you're multiplying by fractions, right? So you can cross multiply that or you can think of it as three over three, which is one. Okay, so if you want to try on your own, you can try addition and subtraction. There's no reason, like I said, there's no particular reason that I did um, multiplication first. If anything, I think it's actually more complicated, but you can try x plus 2 equals 7. One number plus 2 is 7. Use the same logic for the equal sign being balanced. But here you'll, since we're doing addition, you'll use the idea that zero is the additive, additive identity. So again, you only need one step. See if you can figure out what that one step is. If I have something plus two is seven, how do I get rid of this plus two so that I have x plus zero? which would give me x, and then x equals something. See if you can figure it out. I'll be back next time. Hopefully 